and Judiciary Committees. Uh, Senator, are you concerned how this Niger mission unfolded? I am, Wolf, uh, and I'm uh, asking for a classified briefing about exactly what happened in Niger. Uh, we've got uh, many American troops deployed in the region uh, who are part of a multinational effort against both Boko Haram and ISIS uh, and AQIM. Uh, I've got some concerns about the operational details of the incident as they've been reported publicly, and I'm looking forward to getting uh, a more robust briefing uh, from the Department of Defense. Why, why do you just heard Jim Shudo's report uh, and what Politico is reporting? Why do you believe that statement uh, from the White House, from the president about the Niger ambush and the, the killing of these American troops was never sent out? Well, that's hard to understand how they might have failed to get that statement out. Um, all of the reporting you've just covered about the, the back and forth with uh, the, the families of fallen soldiers is uh, disheartening. Uh, I represent, as you know, the state of Delaware. Dover Air Force Base is where uh, every American who falls in service to our nation is first brought. Um, I've gone there for dignified transfer ceremonies with President Trump, with President Obama. Um, and I think it's important that we try and elevate this above partisan politics and just recognize our president has a job to uh, comfort the families of those who fall uh, and to do it publicly and privately, whether in uh, statements about their loss uh, or in um, making appropriate and respectful calls uh, to the families of the fallen. Is an investigation, I know the Pentagon's got its own investigation underway, but should Congress launch a full-scale investigation to answer the questions surrounding this ISIS-affiliated ambush and the killing of these four U.S. troops? Well, I'll tell you, Wolf, I am concerned about an ISIS affiliate uh, in Nigeria. Uh, it is a break-off fragment of what used to be Boko Haram. I'm concerned uh, about the growth of an ISIS affiliate in Niger and in Mali, uh, and I do think that deserves our attention. Whether or not this specific incident uh, and some of the operational uh, shortcomings arises to the level that we need to launch a full investigation, um, I'll wait until we get a classified briefing um, to make a judgment call here. It was a relatively small operation, but we lost four Americans, and it seems there were some shortcomings in intelligence, uh, in air cover, uh, and in the planning and execution of this particular um, incident. I want to get your reaction to that Washington Post uh, report that uh, the father of one fallen U.S. soldier was told by the president back in June uh, that uh, there would be a $25,000 check sent to him. Check was never sent, uh, but the White House today confirming the, the president today uh, sent that check. Uh, what, what, what was your reaction to that when you heard that report? Well, I've got a, a very mixed reaction. It's, uh, it's quite generous of the president to send a personal check of that size to someone, um, but it's unfortunately thoughtless to make that commitment and not follow through on it. He has a great deal of responsibilities as the President of the United States, uh, and whether it's the failure to make a timely statement about the four um, American soldiers lost in Niger or to follow through on that commitment, um, I think there's some execution issues here that ought to be addressed. More importantly, um, we need to all of us uh, be mindful of the sacrifices of the men and women of the United States Armed Forces and the importance of not overly politicizing um, whether or not uh, they're appropriately uh, comforted in a timely way. All of us should be recognizing and remembering uh, those who've died in service to our country. As you know, uh, President Trump brought up the death uh, of uh, his chief of staff's son, uh, General Kelly's son in Afghanistan back in 2010 uh, to justify his accusation that previous presidents didn't call the families of fallen U.S. soldiers. But listen to how the White House responded today. I think that General Kelly is disgusted by the way that this has been politicized and that the focus has become on the process and not the fact that American lives were lost. I think he's disgusted and frustrated by that. And if he has any anger, it's towards that. What's your reaction to that? Because it was the president who brought General Kelly into this entire conversation. That's right. Um, and my hunch is that General Kelly and um, any family um, that has lost someone in combat uh, would rather not be made into a political football uh, either way. Um, as I said before, I think it's important for us to um, reduce the amount of politicization here of questions that the president first brought up uh, about who does and who doesn't uh, reach out to um, the families of the fallen. In my experience, uh, President Obama took very seriously his responsibilities in the times that I joined him at a dignified transfer ceremony in Dover. Uh, but I frankly think what matters most uh, is that we encourage 
uh, our current president to be more of a, of a unifier uh, and that all of us involved in uh, politics uh, focus on uh, the losses of those who served and lost their lives in the line of duty. Yeah, it's a heartbreaking story. And of course, our deepest, deepest condolences to all the families of those who, who've served this country and have fallen in battle. Uh, Senator, there's a lot more. There are more important developments, uh, very important developments unfolding up on Capitol Hill right now. I want to get to that. Need to take a quick break. We'll resume our conversation right after this. The Situation Room with Wolf Blitzer is brought to you by CA Technologies. Download the CNN Politics app from the App Store. Deep insights powered by data built with CA Technologies. What is this place? The Modern Software Factory, a hub of digital transformation. Is this where we come to compete? This is what you build to compete, where insight drives experience, where automation delivers better apps faster, where agile isn't just a buzzword, it's a way of life. What about security? Strong, yet frictionless. All working together at scale. It's about moving to new from old. Oh, that's not right. I'll put mine back on. When you're looking for answers, it's good to have help. Because the right information at the right time may make all the difference. At Humana, we know that's especially true when you're looking for a Medicare supplement insurance plan. That's why we're offering this fact-filled guide, Seven Things Every Medicare Supplement Should Have. And it's yours free, just for calling 1-888-311-3547. You see, Medicare covers only about 80% of your Part B medical expenses. The rest is up to you. That's why so many people purchase Medicare Supplement Insurance Plans like those offered by Humana. They're designed to help you save money and pay some of the costs Medicare doesn't. Depending on the Medicare supplement plan you select, you could have no deductibles or co-payments for doctor visits, hospital stays, emergency care, and more. You can keep the doctors you have now, ones you know and trust, with no referrals needed. Plus, you can get medical care anywhere in the country, even when you're traveling. With Humana, you get a competitive monthly premium and personalized service from a health care partner working to make health care simpler and easier for you. You can choose from a wide range of standardized plans. Each one is designed to work seamlessly with Medicare and help save you money. So how do you find the plan that's right for you? One that fits your needs and your budget? Call Humana now at 1-888-311-3547. That's 1-888-311-3547 for this free guide. It's just one of the ways that Humana is making healthcare simpler. And when you call, a knowledgeable licensed agent producer can answer any questions you have and help you choose the plan that's right for you. The call is free and there's no obligation. You know Medicare won't cover all your medical costs, so call now and see why a Medicare supplement plan from a company like Humana just might be the answer. It all started with a cardboard box. It's what my colleague put his computer on when sitting all day at the office became too painful. So we designed the first Veridesk. Lift it to stand when you want to, lower it to sit when you need to. I have more energy and I get more done. Our boss got the company to buy them for us and I love it. If you sit every day for work, the Veridesk is a must. It's sturdy and comes fully assembled. And if you don't love it within 30 days, we'll pick it up. Go to Veridesk.com to order yours. You might take something for your heart or joints, but do you take something for your brain? With an ingredient originally found in jellyfish, Prevagen is the number one selling brain health supplement in drugstores nationwide. Prevagen, the name to remember. You love your freedom, but is joint pain holding you back? Unlike other creams, Joint Flex helps strengthen joints and gives quick and long lasting pain relief. Flex your freedom with Joint Flex. I do. Who says a I pool do. can't be in the sky? I do it Who says a living room can't be in a pool? Who says a five-star luxury vacation can't be all-inclusive? Sandals La Source Grenada takes innovations beyond the realm of imagination. Experience the sandals of tomorrow today. Call 1-800-SANDALS. Closed captioning brought to you by OnlyMeso.com. Mesothelioma, it's all we do. With seven offices across the country, let us come meet with you. 
Call us at 1-800-213-8000. We're back with Democratic Senator Chris Coons. He's a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee. He's one of the senators who questioned the Attorney General Jeff Sessions earlier today. But the Attorney General didn't answer some very, very specific questions on some extremely sensitive issues. Before we continue our conversation, let's bring in our senior congressional correspondent, Manu Raju. Manu, today's hearing had quite a few tense moments. Yeah, no question about it, Wolf, in large measure because Jeff Sessions just would not answer a number of questions, particularly about his conversations with President Trump, saying a number of those uh, were covered, were just confidential, even though he did not exert executive privilege. One Democrat on the committee, Dick Blumenthal, uh, told me afterwards that Special Counsel Robert Mueller is the one who's going to have to get to the bottom of some of Jeff Sessions' answers since he would not answer questions of the committee. But one thing that Jeff Sessions did say, the country is not prepared for Russian interference in the 2018 elections. For the first time as Attorney General, Jeff Sessions returned to the committee where he served as a senator, and Democrats did not give him a warm reception. You're saying you are privileged? At the heart of the dispute was Sessions' testimony during his confirmation hearing in January, when he said he had no contacts with Russians during the campaign season. After press reports later revealed he did, Sessions acknowledged interacting multiple times with then-Russian Ambassador Sergei Kislyak but said there was nothing to it. You subtly changed your story. Since you have qualified your denial to say that you did not, quote, discuss issues or, uh, of the campaign with Russians, what, in your view, constitutes issues of the campaign? Well, let me just say this without hesitation, that I conducted no improper cam uh, discussions with Russians at any time regarding a campaign or any other uh, item facing this country. May I Number suggest one. that? Uh, that uh, no, no, no. You had a long time, Senator Franken. I'd like to respond. No, I don't, Mr. Chairman, I don't have to sit in here and listen uh, to his uh, You're uh, the one who charges without having a chance to respond. Give me a break. Today, Senator Patrick Leahy said his former colleague may have misled the committee. My concern is you were part of the Russian uh, facade and, and went along with it. And I, I'm sorry. I've known you for years. I'm sorry you would do that. It did hurt me to say you think I'm part of a facade. I'm not part of a facade. Sessions was also asked if special counsel Robert Mueller interviewed him as part of his Russia inquiry. He paused for several seconds before answering. Well, I'd be pleased to answer that. Um, I'm not sure I should without uh, clearing that with a special counsel. What do you think? <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, have you been interviewed um, by them? No. But Sessions uh, did not, not answer yet. many questions, uh, particularly about his conversation with Trump over the firing of FBI Director James Comey and whether the president fired him to end the Russia probe. Did the president ever mention to you his concern about lifting the cloud on the Russia investigation? Senator Feinstein, that calls for a communication that I've had with the president, and uh, I believe it remains confidential. But you don't deny that there was a communication? I do not confirm or deny the existence of any communication between the president uh, that I consider to be uh, confidential. Still, Sessions did not hesitate to criticize Comey for his handling of the Hillary Clinton email investigation. Senator Feinstein, uh, I don't think it's been fully understood the significance of the error that Mr. Comey made on the Clinton matter. The chairman of the committee, Chuck Grassley, said many questions about Sessions' contacts with Russians could be cleared up if the FBI simply briefed the committee. The FBI did not do that. And now that we have conflicts, and now we have conflicts that I think could have been avoided if the FBI would just have been more transparent with the oversight of this committee. Now, Wolf, in some other news in the Russia investigation, we are learning that the Senate Intelligence Committee earlier today interviewed former Trump campaign manager Corey Lewandowski. Lewandowski becomes the latest official to be interviewed as part of the Russia probe. The same committee also has previously interviewed Paul Manafort, Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law. But, Wolf, I can tell you tonight, a number of Republicans on these committees believe it's time by the end of the year to wrap this up. They don't want to see this drag on into an election year. But some Democrats say, look, there's a lot 
lot more to investigate and a lot more questions that still need to be answered. Wolf. All right, Manu, thanks very much. Manu Raja reporting. Let's continue our conversation with Democratic Senator Chris Coons of the Judiciary Committee. Uh, Senator, you were there, uh, Senator. Did you hear an explanation from Sessions as to why he wouldn't answer those specific questions about his conversations with the president? Were you satisfied with his answer about confidentiality? Well, if I wasn't satisfied, the attorney general's job is to uphold the laws of the United States, but not to be a close political ally of the president. And that's a role that has sometimes been confused in our history. Um, I wasn't satisfied that uh, he was fully forthcoming in answering the questions that were appropriate for the committee to ask of him. This was the first time he's appeared in front of the Judiciary Committee uh, since the abrupt firing of Jim Comey. Uh, frankly, the first time he's appeared as attorney general. Uh, and I think he should have been willing to answer questions. If the president didn't fire Jim Comey uh, to protect himself from the ongoing Russia investigation, uh, then I see no reason why the attorney general couldn't have simply said so. And his refusal to answer that question, I think, raises more questions. Senator Chris Coons, thanks uh, very much for joining us. Thank you. Coming up, a new account of the Las Vegas mass shooting given by the hotel security guard who discovered what was going on 